So uh, I watched Maestro, the Oscar, hey, future Oscar nominated movie. A, a lot of these movies we're going to talk about are future Oscar nominees. Um, this stars Bradley Cooper as the aforementioned uh, Leonard Bernstein, who I think most people know as the um, teacher of uh, Lydia Tarr, but he was also a great composer in real life. I didn't know that. Um, he conducted uh, many Philharmonics and he did West Side Story, among other things. Uh, but what this movie is more interested in is uh, his personal relationships uh, with his family and especially his wife, uh, who in the movie is played by Carrie Mulligan. And she plays an actress, a uh, Broadway actress named Fel uh, Felicia um, Montalegre, I think. Um, and I, I have to be honest, I didn't know very much about Felicia prior to this movie. And I want to credit uh, Bradley Cooper um, and, the, and the filmmakers and the screenwriters for this film in really not making a conventional great biopic, great man biopic movie. This is a movie that if, you, if you're going into this movie expecting a beat by beat history of the, the, the writing and composition of West Side Story, this is not going to be the movie for you. In fact, West Side Story is only played at like one little section of the movie. Um, so I think that took me back a little bit. Uh, but in a way that I actually responded to very positively. I'm getting really sick and tired of the great man biopics. We're, we're about to have one that's going to win Best Picture for being also unconventional. And uh, I welcome kind of a fresh approach, not just with the focus of the story, but also in the way that it's made. Um, I think this is a beautifully shot movie. The first half of the movie, which kind of introduces uh, Bernstein and, and Montalegre, uh, their relationship. Um, it's a really fun, action-packed first half. They, there's literally like dancing scenes in the movie it feels like you're watching like a fred astaire ginger rogers musical at times and then the movie shifts midway through to a more contemporary in color scene in scenes and i, I guess i was kind of reminded a little bit of, of raging bull um in how this movie spans the arc of the 20th century but does it in a way that's mostly through the cinematography and it's kind of i guess in a way sort of subtle in how it does it leonard bernstein is someone that you think about both in the past but in the i guess not too recent past as well and i think he kind of traverses that 20th century trajectory in a really interesting way um a lot of critics are fixating on his nose and the fact that this is like pretty clear oscar bait <laughs> Um, you know, everyone, you know, Bradley Cooper has been nominated before. Um, Nicole Kimmon once wore a prosthetic nose to win an Oscar. We've had a, a recent history of best actor Oscar winners that go kind of maybe potentially over the top in career achievement performances, maybe a little bit like Will Smith, a little bit like Gary Oldman. Um, is this performance Oscar bait? I don't, I don't think so. I think he's really good in it. Like, I, I think he ages convincingly. The makeup is pretty awesome in this movie. Um, and uh, I think he's really convincing. Um, if this movie had been made by an independent filmmaker and released in May, I, I wonder what these critics would say. I also think it's kind of a disservice that this movie's being released on Netflix. I saw it in a the theater and I thought it was actually kind of tremendous to watch in theater, particularly the cathedral scene and the scenes where he's conducting Mahler. Um, it was kind of spectacular. It reminded me a little bit of um, Tar, I guess. And uh, I think you, you, need, you need those scenes to understand the grandeur and the spectacle of it because that's central to, to what Bernstein's character really was. But there's also re some really nice intimate scenes between him and his wife. And I think the movie goes in a, a really interesting and unexpected direction. Um, one other movie I'll kind of end with this that I, I thought about a little bit was uh, a documentary from earlier this year called The Lost Weekend, which was all about John Lennon, John Lennon's affair with his mistress in the 1970s, which is a really great documentary. It might make my top 10 list. That was a documentary that wasn't about Lennon the musician. It was about Lennon the human being. And um, as a result, I think you get a deeper kind of more complex glimpse. That documentary was not a hit job and Maestro is not a hit job. I think you come out of this movie with an understanding of the complexity of Leonard Bernstein, but I think in many ways you still admire him and you especially admire Felicia for, for um, her uh, kind of rise and, and fall, I guess. Um, I really dug this movie and I think it's more than just Oscar bait and in a otherwise a pretty weak year for best actor, Bradley Cooper uh, should be the favorite and he should probably win best actor. I'm giving it three and a half stars. Wow. Yeah, I, I Not think seen it can it. be. Yeah, good call. I think it can be Oscar bait and also still be really good. You, you made it sound like those are those are mutually exclusive, and I think this is a a good example of when both work. Um, yeah, I gave it three and a half stars too. Uh, I love the first half, the the frantic kinetic pace of the of the first half, and some of the cool editing that happens in there is really cool. And uh, yeah, let, let, cool story. Like you said, I agree with you. I know Todd doesn't. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was okay. It's not, I mean, I, I didn't think there was anything that interesting about how it's told. It, it's a lot like the theory of everything or something where the wife character is actually the more interesting character and the main and the main performance is super exaggerated and weird. But I mean, it's a fine movie. I, I, I didn't I didn't see any greatness in it and I didn't see any greatness in his last movie either, but I was alone on that one. So yeah, I gave did it two see, and a half stars. Did you see it in theater? No, I, I watched it on TV. I can imagine this movie going down a half star for me if I watched it on TV. I'd probably like give up at certain points, take bathroom break. I, I think seeing in the theater is really important. What I would also want to say is, listen, you know, when Matthew Stafford went to the Rams to win a Super Bowl and when, you know, Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, I mean, OK, you know what? They, they got criticized at first, but they won their title and they became Hall of Fame athletes. And we should have the same sort of philosophy, I think, with Bradley Cooper. Like, so what if he's going for it? Like, he's awesome in the movie. Like, I, I agree with Terry that I, I don't think they're, they're mutually exclusive. I think the critics are getting bogged down in that. And I wish they would just kind of strip that away and look at the movie for, for its strengths and not its maybe I mean, marketing it's strategy. Not, it's not going to hurt his chances to win Best Actor. I mean, we just had a about his Oscar bait of a performance win Best Actor last year. I mean, and this is right. a very similar thing. I I, I fully expect movie, Cooper though. to be... I mean, it's about the same, I, but it. I don't know. I mean, he, he's winning Best Actor for sure. I mean, I, watching the the scenes of him actually conducting, I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is what, what you see in a Best Actor winning role. I think Murphy's winning, but I, I, I think it's it's a, it's a toss-up. Could be a toss-up. Maybe, maybe uh, with Giamatti in there, too. All right. All right. So that's Maestro. It is on Netflix. Yeah, I watched it at home, too. I watched it on TV, but I want to go back and rewatch it like on my iPad so I can have headphones in and really immerse myself in the sound of it. I think that'd be really cool. The smaller, right. the better. <laughs>